So, you think your dog might be deaf. There are tests you can do at home, but when you're doing them, you've got to be really careful that the dog is not smelling you nearby or actually feeling a vibration of a sound. One of the things you can do is while the dog is sleeping, jangle a bunch of keys, bang some saucepans together, ring the doorbell, put it around other dogs that are barking and reacting to those kind of noises, and if the dog is still settled and sleeping, then obviously it's not hearing those sounds. The official testing for deafness is the bear test, and that's a brain test that is generally used on young children, but is the only thing we can use on dogs to determine their deafness. With some dogs, they might still have very high hearing range, with some, they may have very low hearing range. Some dogs are bilaterally deaf, which is therefore just one side or the other. And very occasionally, that can also cause balance problems with a dog. Breeds most commonly affected by deafness appear to be boxers that are white or with white genetics, collies, Great Danes, Dalmatians, and Jack Russell Terriers. But with a puppy, if you bred the litter yourself, you're really not going to notice till the puppies are three or four weeks old. So until then, it will be no different from any of the other puppies in the litter. And then you're going to notice that when the other puppies get up because someone's walked into the room and they were all snoozing but they've got up to say hello, and the little deaf pup, unless he's been cuddled up close with the other puppies, it's just going to be lying there and not know that you're there until he gets a smell of you. to locate a sound and you might find them do a lot of running around and searching before they can actually locate a sound. Um, it can cause a dog a lot of distress in that case. If they've grown up with it from a puppy, they do tend to adjust and don't become so panicky about finding sounds. They become better about it. They use their peripheral vision a lot more. There's many times, for example, with Gollum, that people say to me, are you sure he's deaf? Because he watches very closely what my other dogs do. So if he was a little way out with all my other dogs and I call them in, he's not going to hear that, but he sees the movement out of the corner of his eye and he comes in and he gets back first. And that makes people disbelieve. If you have the other dogs around, you're not going to really notice a lot of difference between the deaf dog and the dog that has hearing, because they, he will follow or rely upon it. When you have a deaf dog on their own, it is a little more difficult, because, for example, if you leave a room, while they're asleep and they wake up, they could become distressed. Whereas when you have other dogs around, they wake up as a person has left the room. It's not really that distressing to them because they've still got their companions there. Um, other things, obviously, is they don't guard bark. So you don't know when anybody's coming because they can't hear them. <laughs> so if you want a dog for that reason, to let you know, then a deaf dog is not for you, obviously. Although some deaf dogs also find a lot of voice because they don't know how to use it properly and that can be quite a bad habit and a hard habit to break. There is the common misbelief that deaf dogs suffer more with separation anxiety. My challenge there is it depends on the dog's grounding, its foundations, its breeding, its socialisation and in my experience deaf dogs are no more likely to suffer separation than a dog with hearing. It's just that a lot of people that get deaf dogs pander to them, they feel sorry for them, so therefore when they leave, the dog becomes upset because they're so, so dependent on that person being within the home. You don't really have to do anything greatly different. If you are, for example, fostering a dog that's coming to a rescue that's two or three years old, that's had a very troubled past, then yes, as with any dog with those kind of stressors, you wouldn't suddenly come up behind it, you wouldn't suddenly wake it from sleep, you wouldn't interfere with it while it was eating and it's just the same, it truly is. Hello, my name's Judy Hopton, this is Elsa. She's just coming up to six months old and I got her at 12 weeks from a friend who's a Dalmatian breeder. We did know that she was unilateral when we got her. Originally somebody else wanted her but then when they found out that she couldn't hear they turned her down because they wanted her for breeding. So she came and joined me with her brother Pepper, who's the same age. He is fully hearing, but she's she can partially hear out of her left ear, but nothing at all out of the right. So she follows a lot of the time 
watching to see what's where I'm going, what I'm doing. She follows her brother quite a lot, but she's always looking out for me when we're across the field. So if they go off running around, she's the one that will come back more than he will. Because <laughs> she just waits until she sees me looking and I just stand there with my arms wide out and she comes running back. So she's much easier to train, funny enough, than he is. All my dogs in the past have been hearing dogs and maybe it's because the other pup is a hearing dog that it helps having him around as well. I haven't found any problems, I've just been more nervous of her getting near roads and things like that in case she can't hear me if she's facing away from me, obviously she wouldn't hear me. But as I say, she doesn't venture too far at the moment because she's always keeping an eye out for where I am. So um, it's, she hasn't been any problem at all really. My name is Mick O'Neill, one of the volunteer dog walkers at Battersea Dogs and Cats Home at Old Windsor. And this is Darley, a nine month old Staffordshire Bull Terrier cross. We don't know too much about his history as he came in as a stray. The staff are working quite intensively with him on sign language and he's very good. The staff at Battersea realised he was deaf uh, more or less as soon as he came in and uh, we have specialist staff that will then start working for him on sign language and to build up a bond with him, which he's doing quite nicely. We have several deaf dogs come in over the year and uh, their chances of getting rehomed is very high. Some people are not interested. They think it's going to be too much of a problem. If they're interested, they'll see one of our specialist staff. They explain that it's not as difficult as they first think. Once they've taken the dog home, there is an online support line that can help if they've got any problems or queries.